good morning to one and all today amit says we are having dr shweta mishra she is an assistant professor in gangadhar mehar university and today we will be dealing with prose and a short story a uh, prose that is written by holander he he has written a prose named no learning without feeling and the second short story is william f jenkins an easy homecoming so these two are very pertinent topic and very much relevant in today's practice so uh, so you hope you all will be enjoying this session so i would request uh, ms shweta ma'am to kindly start the session thank you heva for that wonderful introduction kindly share the screen please uh yes yes previous one okay a very good morning to all of you all the participants present here today we will start a very interesting topic which is applicable for the students like you all when you will read this particular prose this piece of writing written by Clare Hollander will find that some how or the other you feel that you are related to this topic because Clare was not only a and a writer on an or an author but you will find that she was also an english teacher she was a teacher who really dealt with the mental state of the students she wanted to solve the problems that the students face in the real life and that's how she is trying to analyze the problems that students face and based on that she is trying to give certain solutions to her writing so you will find this piece of writing to be quite interesting because the topic itself is thought provoking when you read the title of the prose you find that there are lot many hidden meanings to it it says no learning without feeling this is absolutely true when we talk about learning can we really learn without feeling it we need to ask ourselves these questions what is feeling can somebody really learn superficially and then they feel that they have learned something no not at all in order to learn in order to grasp in order to understand a reader needs to feel that's how clare holander has interpreted it in her writing next slide please about the author she was as i already told you that she is an english teacher in a public middle school at manhattan new york she is described as a very reading and Nishan sir, it's not audible. I think reading. It has to be reading enrichment. When we learn something, when we want to grasp something, when we want to understand a text, we have to first read it with a feeling. That's what she believes in. She is a spirited crusader. Okay, for the arts in a world that is dominated. by what we call as stem subjects 
now this world is dominated by the subjects like when we say what is stem s t e m s stands for science t stands for technology the open pages of new york times newspaper and this particular essay that we are going to read today is uh basically it was published in the new york times on 9th june 2013 13 she is also an author of the young adult novel and the name of the novel is something right behind her this is the novel that she has written next slide please can i have the next slide please hello nisan uh yes i have some internet problem here the main skills that most of the students are lacking today you know whenever you ask the students to write something they are unable to write Swagatika ma'am, would you be able to uh, share the presentation on screen? Ah, It's okay. Is Nisha the problem? Ah. Okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am.
now visible yes ma'am it is visible this light the next one this light yes can we have it in a bigger screen thank you okay so when we are talking about this particular prose that we will learn today she is talking holander emphasizes on the word feeling she says that feeling is the gateway to learning try and understand this this is a very important word that she has emphasized we have to understand it whole heartedly all right now when she says feeling is the gateway to learning what do we mean by that what do we mean by the word gateway it means that if we really want to learn something we have to first feel it has to have an emotional touch because when we feel something we give our 100% to it that kind of emotions we are emotionally attached to it i'll give you an example suppose you are reading a novel in a novel you will find there are so many characters all right at times there are certain characters in the novel where you feel that the characteristic of that character is somewhat related it is somewhat familiar you feel that oh my god i think i know this character so that is the point when you feel like reading the novel whole heartedly because you are feeling you are having a sense of emotion you are getting emotionally attached to the character so that will make your learning process more interesting that's exactly what holander is trying to tell us she says that feeling is the gateway to learning and learning can be without any limits there are no limits to learning you cannot set a benchmark that after this i can i should not cross it no it's not like that learning has got no limits it is endless it is it has got it, it doesn't end anywhere it continues forever and ever and ever it's a continuous process so it is without any limits she wants that her students should read with solemnity and purpose a very important thing a very important message that she wants to give to the students that if they are reading something it can be anything not necessarily only the text that is assigned in your curriculum not at all necessary it can be any text it can be any form of reading that you are reading but the reading has to have a purpose what do we mean by purpose reason why have i chosen this text you should ask yourself this question why have i chosen this author what is the reason what is my purpose before picking up a text you should know the purpose you should know the reason for what you have chosen the text that is very important because when you reason out things you have the clarity of mind you know it very well that yes this is the reason i have chosen the text that's the next point then she says that students generally when she you know whatever she has written previous slide ma'am previous slide please oh, thank you so what she is trying whatever she has noted down in this piece of writing she has all noted the things that she herself has experienced in her class whenever she is teaching the students in her class the kinds of realities that she faced in the class she has mentioned all those things here so she feels that students generally receive the story 
enthusiastically with an emotional punch. Whenever a text has some form of emotion in it, students automatically get that enthusiasm, that energy. That means emotion is somewhat generating a kind of interest within the students. That's what she has realized while teaching her students. She says that the job, what is the responsibility? There can be different kinds of teachers, you know, but a teacher needs to be effective. That's the most important aspect of a teacher's personality. Anybody can, I think anybody can just pick up a text and teach, but effective teaching is a skill. And we being teachers need to be effective. We being teachers need to be mentors. We should have the ability to mentor our students, to show them the right path. We are the path riders of students. So we need to be, the teachers need to be effective in that sense. So she says that the job of an effective teacher is to remove limits on children's learning. Children should not be given an a, uh, given a confined environment to learn. They should be given the freedom to cross the boundaries. Because when you allow the students to cross those boundaries, the real creativity, the real innovative ideas in a student comes out. So that is whose responsibility? It is the responsibility of an effective teacher. You just show them the path and let them choose their own way. Let them explore their own findings. That's how they will learn. That's how they will develop themselves in terms of learning. So in a classroom, a child should be able to develop the thinking skills. Very important. Give them certain assignments, certain tasks, which will involve their mind, where they will be allowed to brainstorm things. Because when you think, then only you analyze. When you analyze, you plan. When you plan, you are able to organize. When you organize, you are able to structure things. So lot many steps, lot many things are involved when you are in the process of thinking. Full ideas. At times, you know, even the teachers will feel so interested and enthusiastic in the class. Emphasizes. And what she says towards uh, uh, the re related to the thinking skills is that these thinking skills, what will it help them? It will help them to enhance their problem solving capabilities. What is problem solving capabilities? The problem solving capabilities is basically how you are able to deal with the conflicts, how you are able to solve the issues, the day-to-day -day problems that we face as humans. So this kind of environment can be created inside the classroom itself. And being an effective teacher, we can do it. Right? Next slide, please. Based on this particular concept, she targets a particular curricular development in the United States of America. She has talked about a curriculum and she emphasizes upon common core state 
standards common core state standards this is the curriculum that basically the american schools follow and based on this she has emphasized on the agnostic texts what is agnostic 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 is related to the non believers you know when you are suppose not believing in god you are an atheist so these texts are something which the students are forced upon okay and they are used in the english classroom we can say that the basically when you see the dictionary meaning of the word agnostic it is the existence of god or of the divine or the supernatural which is not known to us which we do not know whether it really exists so when we are talking about the agnostic and it is related to the texts which is used in the english classroom the they are the texts which no child would choose to read on her own that means these are the texts where students do not have any interest in. they are forced to read the students do not believe in these texts but because it is there in the curriculum they have to read it that means when you give a choice to the student whether you will pick up this book to read or not a student will never choose such books agnostic texts are like that that's what she is emphasizing upon in this portion so she says that when we are talking about such texts which are being incorporated in our curriculum we have to be extra curricular extra careful as to what to incorporate in a curriculum and what not to incorporate for incorporate in a curriculum that is what we have to keep in our mind when we are designing a curriculum or when we are designing a syllabus we have to be extra careful we have to always keep the students in our mind before designing so she says that text selection is the most critical component of any english curriculum she is giving her own example because she is an english teacher and she says that whenever the you know the the people when they sit together and decide which text should should be incorporated in a curriculum they should take extra measures to think again and again and again keeping the students in mind whether a particular text should be incorporated or not text selection is very very critical and she suggests that it's time for the alignment of the education system it's high time now so what we are supposed to do we are supposed to align our education once again it is not in the right place we have to align it properly we have to reshuffle things again and then put it in a proper order and by opening a real discussion about what teens should read in middle school and high school there should be clear cut distinction as to the requirements of the students the learners who are in middle school and the learners who are in high school and based on the requirements based on the needs of the students we need to redesign our curriculum that's how a student will be able to read or learn with a feeling without which the student is lacking the most important aspect of reading or learning that's what she has said next slide please so 
whenever we give the students certain kinds of we evaluate students on the basis of certain parameters we should keep few things in our mind it says she says that tests given to adolescents need to be based on books students read in school whatever the students read in the school the tests should be based on those books because the students have read it in the school they will be able to analyze it better and she talks about the skills based standards the skills based standards it ignore the basic fact what is the basic fact that the skill based standards ignore it is nothing but it which says that language learning must occur language learning must occur in a meaningful context a very important part that she has told here i would like you all to highlight this particular point and what is that particular point she says that language learning must occur in a meaningful context it the language learning should be context based very important the surrounding the environment where we are learning is an important factor in language learning which the skills based standards generally ignore they do not take care of this fact which is very important and the next part that she talks about is the basis for higher level learning what is the basis of higher level learning for specially for philosophy psychology literature and even political science any subject that we pick up the basis for higher level learning is nothing but the emotions and impulses that people feel every day then only you will find your learning to be the real learning or else it is just superficial learning which is of no use learning has to be with your feel it has to have that emotion because when you are attached to something which you are learning you are automatically you create that interest and when you do something with with interest you never forget it so the basis for higher level learning should be emotion it should be related to the emotions and impulses of what that people feel every day on a day to day basis which means the common feeling that we have on our day to day basis the higher level learning should be based on that that's what she has said next slide please ma yeah okay so this is all about holanders beautiful learn uh, piece of writing that she has talked about she has talked about an important points that each one of us should keep in our mind while learning so if you have any doubt towards the end of the class you are free to ask me the questions okay so shall i move to the next one that is the next short story which is really very very interesting i want you all to read this story line by line because when you read it you will feel it okay as we have learned how much feeling is important and when you feel something and read 
you really create that interest within you. So I want that the next the story that we are going to learn today should be read by all of you. So let us start with the next short story, a beautiful story written by Dub Will F. Jerkins. Okay, he was uh, Murray Leinster was the pen name of Will is William Fitzgerald Jenkins. This was his full name and it was Murray Leinster. It was his pen name. Stories and articles and he has published over 1500 see look at the numbers it is 1500 short stories not, not only short stories and articles he has also written movie scripts and hundreds of radio scripts and television plays that also he has written in the first world war he served with the U.S. Army for one year. That was from 1917 to 1918. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, uh, let's analyze the title. Before I tell you about the story, I would like to tell you that there is a word which is there in the title which says the uneasy homecoming. Okay. Now, what do we mean by this particular word uneasy? When we see this word uneasy, there are so many meanings that starts in our mind. You know, we start thinking about so many different things about this particular word. So what this word mean to us uneasy means at times causing anxiety you know when you are worried about something when you are nervous about something you feel very uneasy okay then when you are troubled when you are facing some problems in your life or at any point of your life you feel very uneasy. You feel troubled. And uneasiness may also mean to be uncomfortable. When we encounter, I think all of us at one point of time in our lives have felt this uneasiness. Okay? A kind of uncomfortable which has caused certain anxieties, certain worries in our life where we feel really troubled. That's the meaning of uneasy. And with this, we will start the story because the main plot, the story, the plot of the story revolves around this particular word that is uneasiness. Okay? That's why the title of the story is relevant to it. Next slide, please. Now, I will tell you, uh, it's a long story, but I will not be able to tell you the whole of the story, but still I'll tell you the summary of it so that you are able to understand what exactly the story is all about. You know, uh, the story basically focuses on a female character and the name of the female character is Connie. C-O-N-N-I-E, Connie. Now, this female character, she has arrived at her place because she was on a two-week holiday. She was not there in her house. So she had locked her house and she has left for the vacation. So this particular story is after she has returned from that vacation, and she arrives to her place. But one interesting thing about this, the place where her house is located 
is that that particular house is in an isolated area where her friends do not live nearby her friends live but they live just next to to the uh, you know across the bay not the place where her house is situated that's an interesting thing so it's a kind of you know when you start reading that story you will start having this creepy kind of feeling you know the thrilling feeling you you feel so excited to read the story line by line that's why i told you please read it line by line you'll really you'll thoroughly enjoy the story so after she returns to her house spending that two weeks holiday she uh, the the house which is situated that is on the other side of the bay and her nearest neighbor's house they are built across the bay so near her house you will find no other neighbors her neighbors are a little bit far away from her house which is across the bay that is exactly the scene with which the story begins next slide please now you can divide this particular short story into two different parts in the first part of the story you will find that pony is sharing her feelings the moment she reaches her house after two weeks in the first part in the second part of the story you will find how pony is trying to overcome her fear and she is trying to come out of the situation in which she is she is trying to come out bravely out of the situation although she is in fear you cannot say that she is doing it uh, with a lot of guts and she is trying to come out of the situation it's not like that but in the first part you will find that pony is having a different kind of feeling and in the second part of the story you will find that she comes out bravely from that particular situation so you can divide the story into two parts and the whole story revolves around the female character pony keep that in mind so in the first part pony is really nervous uneasy the word uneasy starts from the very beginning she is nervous and uncomfortable what is the reason the reason is her partner tom okay would be arriving late in the midnight so try and understand this story she comes home after a two week long vacation but without her partner she is all alone when she is driving down to her place even on the way she is thinking as to how she will cope up with the situation when she reaches her house because there would be no one she will have to spend few hours without her partner tom she is thinking and thinking she is asking herself many questions whether she would be able to stay alone okay she is in a state of confusion and when she reaches her place the cab driver dog drops her outside her house and the cab driver leaves the place when she sees the taxi being driven away from that onwards she starts feeling very nervous because now she is all alone with her baggages standing outside her house and she knows that her partner would be arriving late 
she enters into her house but she doesn't notice certain change outside her house that was in the garden area there were few things which were not there earlier but she fails to notice those changes okay she enters into her house but when she enters she somehow feels very uncomfortable she again comes out and she feels that you know she should spend some time talking over phone with mrs winston mrs winston is her neighbor after calling mrs winston she realizes that she has made the greatest mistake by calling mrs winston what is the mistake the blunder that she has done she felt that if she talks to mrs winston she will get some kind of relief some kind of solace from mrs winston but mrs winston makes her all the more scary you know how mrs winston tells her that oh pony you have reached home let me tell you something which you don't know and what is it you know when you people were not there in this place there were some theft that took place in some houses and she names some people whose house have been stolen there were thefts there were burglary happening near by so some unknown some strangers have come to the place which makes her all the more frightened now she is really terrified that oh my god i did a great mistake by talking to mrs winston because she has made me all the more frightened i thought i would be getting some kind of relief by talking to her but no it is absolutely wrong so mrs winston tells her about the burglary happened in several houses next slide please after talking to mrs winston she decides to go to her bedroom to keep her baggage somehow she switches on the lights and she reaches her bedroom but she notices that in her bedroom someone the presence of someone could be felt how she felt that the smoked cigarettes somebody had smoked the cigarettes and had casually dropped it on the rug so she could find those smoked cigarettes lying on the rugs then she realized that no there is something wrong that has happened in my house in my absence even though i was not present definitely the burglars have crept in they have entered they have broke into my house that was the kind of intuition she started having once she reaches her bedroom she questions herself she asks herself certain questions now the nervous feeling that she was having it increases she becomes all the more worry now she questions herself as to what could possibly be under her bed maybe someone is hiding there or is it something lying under my bed there were so many questions that started you know creeping into her mind and 
as she peered under the bed oh my god her intuition was correct she found a bulging bag and what was there in the bulging bag nothing but the stolen loot whatever the burglars had stolen they had kept it inside that bag and hidden it under the bed oh now she started having the goosebumps all over she knew that somebody was there apart from her somebody was watching her maybe or somebody was there in her house in her absence now she was absolutely sure about it the moment she saw that bulging bag she dragged it out and emptied all its contents on the floor and instantaneously she could recognize some of the items why she could recognize some of the items because these items belonged to her known persons to her own neighbors as mrs winston had rightly said that her neighbors were looted and those items in the bags were exactly the same items from some of the householders she already next item next slide please next slide thank you so on seeing these items her knees were moist when do you start sweating the moment you start getting nervous the moment you feel frightened what happens everywhere your knees start sweating your palms start sweating and exactly that's how Connie felt, and her house. She realizes that her house had been used as a hiding place for the loot of the burglaries that had taken place in her absence. Because she was away for two weeks, so so her house was the best place where the burglars could hide the looted. and that what that's what she realized after seeing these things suddenly one thing strikes her mind that what she had done when she had entered into her house she had switched on all the lights now when you switch on all the lights suppose the burglars are hiding outside her house somewhere near her house they might have seen her they might have come to know that yes the owner of the house has returned yes or no so now she realizes that she has to go and turn off all the lights because her life is in danger the moment the burglars would come to know they would come and kill her because all the looted items were hidden in her house so they will not spare her life they will kill her so she realizes and she needs to turn off the lights in her house while switching off the lights she notices that the window pane of the kitchen was missing that means definitely the burglars have broke into the house through that particular window pane because it was missing they might have entered through that window and now you won't believe the kind of feeling she start starts having next slide
Next slide, please. Let's let this slide, no, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So, after some time, she could hear the faint footsteps coming towards her, and the moment she could hear this faint footsteps, she realizes. That it is none other than the thief or the bugler who has come to take the looted items, and she gets all the more nervous. She tries to hide herself, and when she was hiding in a corner of a room, she sees that the bugler is holding a torch. in his hand and most probably the bugler has come to know that the owner of the house is inside the house the owner of the house has returned from the vacation and the bugler was trying to search for her with the help of the torch so the bugler was searching for her in the house why because definitely he might have seen her ah huh? and she soon felt that when that person was holding the torch no you can see that faint light gets reflected on your face so if somebody wants to see you they will be able to see your face not clearly but in a faint manner exactly that's what happened with pani she was able to see the face of the bugler can you guess what do you realize who that bugler might be to our astonishment to our surprise the face was known to her next slide please okay and the moment she saw the face of the person that was the unbelievable for her she could not believe that it is a known person not a stranger who has been doing this activity for several days okay somehow she realizes that this is not the safe place for her to stay and she manages to escape from the house because the house was dark so somehow she manages to escape from the house and flee outside the garden the moment she reaches the garden she finds that there was a bike motorcycle which was leaning against the garage and near that particular motor bike the petrol was leaking and that petrol that oil it was spread all over the ground suddenly something struck her mind she feels she feels that there she can do something about it an idea struck her mind and you know what she did she had a match box in her pocket the coat that she was wearing there was a match box inside that pocket she removed the match box and she burnt that spill that oil spill on the floor and there was a huge and fierce fire all over you know what is the reason why why she did that she did that because when the neighbors would see that fire they would be able to sense the danger so it was a kind of signal that she wanted to give to others that her life was in danger there was someone who had come to her place so she it was a kind of signal she wanted to give to others for help and that really worked how it worked 
the people on the other side of the way would see it and they would know about the danger next slide please so the fire grew fiercely and the lights of the cars began to focus towards the house the others came to know that there is something wrong something wrong has happened in the house and she people comes there to help her the story ends in a very interesting manner you know how she starts crying for whom for mrs winston because the bugler the thief whose face she saw in that torch light was none other than mrs winston's son what was the name of her son charlie okay who was responsible for all this thefts so she cried for mrs winston because she realizes that even mrs winston's life was in danger as her son was involved in the theft activity he could, he would have even killed mr mrs winston for that that's why she feels sorry for mrs winston and the story ends with a very interesting this is all about the story now i will tell you some of the analysis that i have done about the story after i hope you all liked the story because when i was reading the story it was already uh, past 12 it was midnight and when i was reading the story you know i was having this goose bumps all over having that strange creepy feeling you know when you watch a horror movie all alone so i was exactly feeling the same when i was reading the story so i came up with some analysis after reading the story and that is the writer tries to establish a psychological thriller it's a thriller which you will thoroughly enjoy and it's psychological because it is related to the mental stability the mental state of the female character connie at times in the beginning the how she felt so nervous about it and towards the end somehow her mental she could regain her mental stability and she was able to come out of the situation so that's an interesting thing about the story the writing style is really very very descriptive when you read the story there are certain lines which are beautifully written okay and when you read that particular lines you will really enjoy those lines like you will find there are certain lines like i will quote quote and quote the red dying sun cast long shadow so when you read these lines you are able to picture it out you are able to see what exactly she is trying to describe through the words so she has uh, the the author has beautifully portrayed it in the form of writing and when you read it one after the other you can feel the suspense it creates suspense through particular words and phrases the words and phrases when you read the story no you're you're so uh, inquisitive to know what next oh my god after this what how will she solve the problem you get involved into the story that's the beauty of the story so it creates suspense throughout the story and she has used beautiful words to create that story absolutely wonderful to read it and the narrative technique that she has used is third person narrative technique the language is personification personification what do you understand by personification when we are trying when we try to use certain words in order to personify something like when i say a uh, ram roar like a lion so is ram a lion no ram is not lion but he is roaring like lion 
So Ram here is uh, personified. That's how we use personification. So there is a lot of personification which is used here. Like I will talk, uh, tell you about the word like dark. You know, dark is again personified. Death is a word that has been personified. Red, you know, that's the environment. Red is means that is the signal of danger. So such words are constantly used here. These are some of the analysis that I have done about the story. I hope you all liked it and I want you all to read it again. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Any questions? Yeah, thank you, ma'am. I don't think any participant is there. After attending the session, they are leaving the session. Oh. But it was quite fun. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am, for such a wonderful session. It was very insightful. And by adding, by taking labor into hand and by having all the experiences that you shared, it was really, very really insightful. So I would like to thank you on behalf of in, on behalf of every participants and the technical team too, who did a very challenging task of presenting the screen and everything. I would like to thank each and every person who tried to manage this program. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. I, for yeah, even I really enjoyed reading these two texts that gave me a lot of you know different aspects to it. So I even enjoyed taking the class. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, we will, we will do, yes. Yeah. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Hopefully, we will be having more such sessions with you. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, ma'am.